Hey everyone, I'm Super Dazza. And I'm Pearly. And welcome to another episode of Smite Community Concepts. For Hell's Dark Stance, she would wear a simple, somewhat revealing cup costume, which would include tall jeans and a badge, as well as a cup hat that's a bit damaged, as if she's been through many fights, and some cool shades. On her waist she would have a taser, a gun, and some smoke grenades, and she would be smoking a cigar. Her light stance would be the somewhat forensic scientist side, as well as a medic, she would wear a simple, less revealing cop costume, again including tall jeans and a badge, as well as a less damaged cop hat, but no glasses. On her waist she would have a first aid kit, some bandages, and some small healing grenades. The long fabric that flows down on default hell would be replaced with some handcuffs, and she would have green floating colours to symbolise healing. Hell would have an American voice for this concept. Jen also submitted the victory and defeat screens for this skin, so I'll just quickly go through those. The victory screen would have Light Stance happily sipping some coffee, watching Dark Stance eating a donut and slowly hitting a suspect. The defeat screen would have Dark Stance going insane on a criminal, while Light Stance tries to calm her down. They'd both start shouting at each other, which is enough time for the criminal to escape. They'd both notice the criminal is gone and quickly bring him back. This process would be repeated. For Decay, the first ability in her dark stance, she would pull out her gun and shoot a bullet that would explode on impact. For Restoration, the first ability in her light stance, she would throw either a giant bandage or a giant healing grenade forwards. For Hinder, the second ability in her dark stance, Hell would throw her taser, and enemies would have small sparks under them. For Cleanse, the second ability in her light stance, a giant SWAT shield with the sign of the red cross on it would show, and allies would have small green auras under them. For the third ability in her dark stance, Repulse, she would go on a frenzy and start shooting bullets in all directions. Small tiny bullets would be released, and the circle would be similar to that of a smoke screen. For Inspire, the third ability in her light stance, she would throw a healing grenade under her, exploding and hitting all friendly allies, similar to Anna's grenade from Overwatch. And for her ultimate, Switch Stances, when switching from Dark Stance to Light Stance, small healing effects would show, and when switching from Light Stance to Dark Stance, handcuffs would show. Whenever she switches stances, police sirens would be heard. Muzan would be a fairy for this concept, and he would look like he does in Space Sheepy's art. He would appear to have a nature-inspired look to him, with a leafy outfit, headband and wrap around his arm. He'd have a wooden and leafy armband on the other arm which appears to connect his rainbow starry stinger to him, and he would have antennae. His voice would be soft and sweet. For Hive, his first ability. His hive would be replaced by a small fairy house on a branch with small glowing fairies surrounding it, as Space Sheepy's art shows. For his second ability, Swarm, a ball of glowing fairies would be sent forward. For his third ability, Honey, he would spread grass and flowers across the floor, similar to Busy Bee Cupid's ultimate. And for his ultimate, Stinger, he would shoot out his big rainbow starry stinger. For this concept, Tater submitted this art, which our artist used, along with his almighty wizardry, to make this art. Ravana would be a skeleton for this concept, with his appearance being a haunting visage of a dead king. He would wear decrepit, ornate armour that would be decorated with arcane symbols and references to Vishnu, Ram, and Ravan. He would have sharp fangs, haunting hollow eyes, and cracks in his skull that would allow his soul or blue fire things to show through. He would have a broken crown on his head that shows that he was a king, with raw and evil power, but has now fallen. He would have a cape, and he would have a haunting, guttural, slightly demonic voice, on par with demonic pact Anubis. For his first ability, Prana Onslaught, Ravan would thrust his left arm forwards, sending out two knightly skeleton guards surrounded with soul-like blue flames, who would slam with maces. 
for overhead kick. His second ability, he would do his regular backflip, but he would throw out a familiar of his own head that cackles as it moves. For his third ability, Ten Hand Shadow Fist, Raven would unleash three arrows with chains attached to the bottom, which would impale for the root effect, with a singe-like effect around the enemy's legs with blue flames and scorching earth. And for his ultimate, Mystic Rush, Raven would lunge into the air and drop to his target area, plunging his fist into the earth. As he lands, an X-shaped spurt of fire with parts of skeletons within would shoot out and upwards. The earth would be left scorched and with bones for a few moments. And that's all for this episode. Thanks for watching. The winner of last episode was horror novelist Jean Cui by Rogolo. Click the card on screen to go watch that episode. You can also vote for your favourite from this episode by clicking the little I in the top right corner of the video. Subscribe for more, like if you enjoyed, and we'll see you next time. Take care. Bye bye.